What's up everyone? Today we are here in Istanbul. While we were in the Middle East and Greece, we got many comments from people saying that we had to check out Turkey. And yeah, just a few weeks ago, we decided to come here and we're gonna be spending a month here because Turkey is a very big country. Right now we're on the rooftop of our apartment. Get some really awesome views from up here. So on Google Maps, it says that that is called the Sea of Marmara. So loads of like boats around here. I think there's some islands as well. The Prince's Islands are called. But yeah, just really nice views. And from up here as well, you can see the many mosques, the minarets, the little towers. So over here as well, you can see some more. Loads of noisy seagulls as well. Probably one of the better views we've had in a city, right? Yeah, yeah, this place is very nice because you can see like uh, different areas of uh, this part. I think this this area is called Sultan Sultan Ahmed. Sultan Ahmed or Sultan something. Ahmed, yeah, something like that. It's like yeah. the main historic part. Yeah, and I think that's one of the main areas where the tourists stay when they come to Istanbul. That's why we're staying here too. And this is the spot that we stay in Camelot Apartments number nine up there somewhere and we really like this area because it's pretty quiet isn't it yeah uh, we needed to find a quiet place to stay because we had some work to do and in istanbul istanbul is very hard to find a quiet place at least in this area so yeah we find some sort of quiet because there are still the seagulls yeah <laughs> making the noise some construction yeah but it's a very nice area and like we said it's a touristic area so there are many restaurants and all the th main things to see here is very close by you can walk to all of them i think yeah so this place has loads of other hotels and apartments around here but there's just not many people walking around here and you'll see in the rest of istanbul there's going to be a lot of people already got another mosque here loads of mosques around istanbul Another thing about our area, we really like the architecture style. Some really nice buildings around here. The little cobble streets as well. Quite colorful too, as you can see. So right next to the place that we're staying, we kept seeing this big wall here and we've been wondering what it was. Cause around here, it kind of curves around, goes all the way around there. And yeah, you can just tell by looking at it that it's super old, looks easily over a thousand years old so after checking online that is actually a public arena from the roman period so where they do like chariot racing horse racing so this is like the outer walls so it's around 2000 years old and it's still standing and now you even have a building on top a modern building that always reminds me of the film ben-hur i'm sure some of you have seen that i always remember the the chariot scene the main scene oh gladiator right so that was in a like a little stadium like that. I was wrong to just say little stadium because from what I read, that would hold 100,000 spectators, which is kind of a similar amount to modern day uh, football stadiums. <laughs> Pretty insane. Oh, that's cool here, yeah, look. Wonder what this is here. Ah, oh, this looks like where uh, water would have come out, I guess, in the old times. So this area that we're in now is called Sultan Ahmed Square and this is where the races would have happened where we're at right now and you have these two obelisks here so you got this one here and then the more impressive one over there which we'll get to so this one looks older but it's actually newer a lot newer it's the 10th century column of Constantine no idea how you say that part there <laughs> It says here that it's one of the three ancient monuments which has survived to the present day in the middle of the Hippodrome. So that's what they called the arena, the, the Hippodrome. So some of you have probably heard of Constantinople, which was the capital of the Roman Empire and later on the Eastern Roman Empire during the Byzantine period. And that was here in Istanbul. That's where we are right now. So this is the main obelisk that we were excited to see here, the obelisk of Theodosius. 
and the reason that we wanted to see it is because that is from Egypt so that is from Karnak temple which we visited recently and I remember the tour guide telling us that there was two obelisks I think yeah. she said one was moved here which we're looking at right now mm -hmm. and the other yeah, one was place. where? in Paris did we see that one in Paris? No, I, don't, I, don't I don't think, think so, so, right? It's on a square, specific square, which we didn't visit. I didn't know it was from Egypt, but when I saw the picture, I knew it because of the hieroglyphics. The hieroglyphics, yeah. And it's very interesting that we are here right now. And a few months ago, we were in the original place of the of the obelisk. Yeah. <laughs> so that was built in Karnak Temple in the 1400s BC. And when the Romans conquered Egypt, they transferred that on the River Nile to Alexandria, which is one of the cities, the Egyptian cities on the coast, the Mediterranean coast. And I think it stayed there for 30 years. And then in the fourth century, they brought it here. So you can get a pretty good close up view here. It's still, still super detailed. Really impressed by how preserved it is. So all sides of the obelisk are depicting Tutmosi III's victory in Syria, the Egyptian king. So there's another cool monument in the square, not as old, this is from 1895, it's called the German Fountain. See the locals getting water here, seems like pure water people are drinking it. Is it nice and cool? Yeah, it's very cold actually, oh, yeah? refreshing because it's a hot day today. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, it is cold, that's nice. Really nice designs in there. So they built this because the emperor of Germany at the time came here. We are now entering the most famous attraction in Istanbul, which is the Sultan Ahmed Grand Mosque, also known as the Blue Mosque. There is a strict dress code here. I think we're good though. So yeah, if you're a male, you have to wear pants. Well, female as well. I think you just have to cover until your elbows. Yeah, I think you have to wear a headscarf. Yeah, I brought my scarf. So yeah, Carol brought it. <laughs> so it is prayer time right now. So visitors aren't allowed. We've got to wait about uh, an hour before we can go into the mosque around here. So we're just walking around this area. This is Sultan Ahmed Park now. And there's another mosque over there, a really cool one, um, Hagia Sophia. I think this is probably the most impressive mosque we've ever seen, right? Yes, I think so. We haven't seen many, really. <laughs> no, that one in Oman was very nice too. Yeah, this one is different. I Looks bigger. Looks bigger, yeah. Yeah, different colors and stuff. Yeah, it's very impressive. <laughs> that one too. Yeah, that one too. Can't wait to get inside. This is definitely the most beautiful area that we've seen so far. Really nice green park. Got a really beautiful big fountain there as well. And then moss either side. On the fountain you have some really nice mosaics as well. I think all around you get different mosaics. I guess that's the two mosques there. Dolphins. I don't know if you get dolphins around here. Wow, look at that though for a sight. now it seems like they actually take turns so that's the blue mosque right now and then when that guy finishes this one will do the prayer I don't know if it's the same prayer and it's just a continuation or if it's different they seem to be repeating the same thing I think So we've decided to come to the Hagia Sophia Mosque first. It's got a big, big line <laughs> all the way outside in the park. So it seems like it's for free, right? 
Yeah. Don't have to pay anything. No. And if you need any scarf or anything, I think they can lend you at the entrance. But I think it's for free too. Yeah. Pretty epic looking entrance here. Wow, look at the size of the doorway. Doorway for giants. Wow. This looks amazing inside already. This place is huge. Yeah. Gigantic. Yeah, so especially tall. the the ceiling. Man, the ceiling is so high. So it's more like uh, golden and black it seems. Golden and black. I haven't really seen that mixture of colors before. Some blues over there. This side's really faded, but also kind of golden. Good shots. Yeah, <laughs> trying to. Got these cool like chandeliers as well. Everywhere. Wow, look at the size of that one in the middle. Wow, yeah. I think it's, that's the biggest one. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely the biggest one. I'm gonna sit down here on the floor after all that standing up in the queue. So this place was originally constructed in 537 by a Eastern Roman Emperor called Justinian I. It was the Christian Cathedral of Constantinople and at that time it was the largest cathedral in the world for a long time until the fall of the Roman Empire. So in 1453 there was the fall of Constantinople and that's when the Romans or the Byzantine Empire was defeated by the Ottomans and then this place was quickly converted into a mosque. So this is interesting, we were just about to leave through this exit here and as you can see that almost looks like uh, Christian images there, I think, I think it is. So I don't know if that's from the past. I think in mocks that we've been to you never really see images of people, do you? No. You see patterns and designs? Yeah, like the mandalas and the designs. Oh, geometric and yeah. stuff. And usually on like Catholic churches you see the, the saints and Jesus, yeah. it's just different. So we're going to grab some lunch now. Carol found some places on Google Maps that have uh, rooftop views. So we're gonna check those places out. Probably it'd be a bit more expensive so far. The food has been really affordable here. I think we've been paying like three to four dollars for, for some meals. So it'll probably be more than that. I got some other angles of the Blue Mosque. Ah, so even down here, there's some nice restaurant areas. And this is one of the bazaar areas. The market areas. Probably be checking out a market properly in the next video. Oh, it looks pretty cool though, doesn't it? Yeah. Turkish market. So we found a good spot. Nice breeze as well. Nice and cool. So you got sea views back there. You want to sit at the sea? And got an amazing view here of the Blue Mosque. Look at that. Now you can see it completely. As expected, it is more expensive. I think it's almost like double, right? What we've been paying the other days. Yes, I think for the vegetarian casserole, which I ate another day, I paid 90, and here is 140. Yeah, so we always get these cheese rolls. That's gonna be 80 lira. And I think I'm gonna go for the chicken shish kebab, 150. I think that's it right there. What are you getting? The same as usual, the vegetarian casserole. Oh, the one that you just mentioned, the price. Yeah. So I got this drink that's popular here. It's called Ayran. It's like a salted milk. It tasted weird at first, but it's grown on me. I actually like it now. And then the places here always bring the bread. It's almost like a naan bread, right? Mm -hmm. Like an Indian naan bread. Yeah, very similar. Yeah, and then this is like a spicy sauce. And this is like some sort of yogurt, right? Yeah. So these are the cheese rolls right here. Also has a bit of herbs inside. We've been getting this with every single meal since we've been in Turkey so far. Every single meal. I love that they put the herbs. It gives a different taste than just the cheese roll. So the portions are always great here in Turkey so far and this has been one of my favorite meals the chicken shish kebab I really like the, the red sauce 
and got roasted potatoes didn't get that in the other place they always have this little slice of bread as well and then besides that just got some cabbage lettuce some onions there and other herbs tomatoes pepper they even brought some more bread so this is for free it's always been for free in every place that we've gone so that's good other places in Europe usually charge and yours looks better than uh, other places looks different yeah on other places I think they put like a tomato sauce but here is like a cheesy sauce so yeah totally different from the other casseroles that I, I had but it's very good too it's like potatoes, mushrooms, tomatoes I think uh, some other things on top here and cheese mm -hmm. yeah Carol loves cheese so yeah. that's a good thing so just like in Greece, they give us some free things at the end. So we got some free Turkish tea and this is called baklava. Looks similar to the desserts that we had in like Egypt and Amman. Yeah, it's a bit similar. I think they have baklava over there too. Yeah, I can't have it because it has uh, pistachios, nuts. Yeah, I'm allergic. Nuts. Mm -hmm. Oh, inside. inside <laughs> yeah, that would kill me. It's all for me. Yeah. Two for Carol. We're heading into the Blue Moss now. As you can see, it's under construction here or reconstruction so can't really see how it would look from the outside from here well this part you can so unfortunately we're not seeing this place at its best so even on the inside they're doing loads of maintenance so you can't really see much to be honest just a bit there through the middle the designs look nicer though since it is a lot newer than the other one oh yeah besides that if you look around on the ground you can't see any other walls or anything it's come back another time, I guess. Yeah, it's a shame. Yeah, the, it is. Like, like I said, the ceiling looks awesome. Yeah. The colors. So this one was built in 1616, much later than the other one, under the rule of Ahmed the First, and his tomb is here, Ahmed the First, and it was built on top of a Byzantine palace. Byzantine palace is beneath here, and once this was constructed, this became the main mosque of Istanbul, no longer Hagia Sophia that we just visited. Man, I wish we could see it though, without all this construction. So here we can see how it is supposed to look on the inside. So we couldn't see this outside area here. Definitely couldn't see that it looked like this from the inside. Couldn't really see anything right now to be honest. Yeah, it does look beautiful though, look at that. So next to the mosque of Hagia Sophia, there are some more attractions. So we have the fountain here, another fountain, really cool one. And we're heading into the palace here, which is now a museum. Almost looks like a castle wall, so like a fort on the outside. What's this about the fountain? Fountain of Ahmed III, 1729. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, I really like the design of Yeah, almost looks like a temple. <laughs> yeah. I really like that they have these things here, like uh, we've seen many historical places here. They all have the same thing. Explaining, which is very good. It's like an obelisk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I think they have in other languages too. Yeah, I guess yeah. that's uh, Turkish, isn't it? Yeah. And then this is Arabic, I guess. Yeah, so as Carol was saying, they have the obelisk of information in front of everything. So this palace is called Topkapi Palace. It says that it was built after the conquest of Constantinople in 1453. So just like the area outside, you've got a really nice green garden area here. Just a very nice place overall. Oh, i got some horses coming through. So this is just the courtyard area. We do have to buy tickets to enter this place. Have to see how much it is. So I think the actual palace area is behind there. Oh, that's a cool wall. Cool entrance. The towers. Carol going for the illegal shortcut. Long legs. Long legs. 
So the ticket that we got was 420 per person and that's entrance to the palace, a museum and something called the harem section. So our first stop is in the harem and look at this, it's beautiful. You got the, the tiles everywhere. Ceramics. It looks like the palaces that we went to in India. Yeah. Which were Islamic too. Yeah. And also the one that we visited in Sevilla. Remember the, the big one? The Which was Islamic too. As well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you had all these cool tiles there. So this palace was the residence of the sultans in the 15th and 16th centuries. And then in the 17th century, they moved to another palace around here. And this one was kind of abandoned. This right here is definitely the best room so far. So this is called the Imperial Hall. So important ceremonies would happen here, like weddings, birth ceremonies. Wow, look at the ceiling as well. Yeah, so we mentioned the palaces, the Indian palaces. It was like this as well. I remember there'd be a big area like this. The seats were very similar. Man, there's so much artwork though. One big piece of art, the entire room. So even in the courtyard area, still looks amazing. They still have the tiled walls. This side's more plain, but still really cool architecture. So I think it reminds us the most of Udaipur. Yeah, uh -huh. the, I, I don't remember the name of the place, but it was like a palace like this, very similar. And it was beautiful, one of the most beautiful attractions in the area. Yeah, if you want to know what we're talking about, check out the Udaipur vlog. Maybe I can link it at the, the end of this video. Very similar, the, the palace style. So inside the palace, you also get some awesome views here. So this is the river that splits the two continents. So Istanbul on that side is in Asia and we're in Europe right now. So there is a bridge back there and you can cross from Europe into Asia. And there's also a tunnel here. What, below? Yeah. Yeah, uh, like uh, connecting the two continents. Oh, really? Yeah, tunnel. We got it. Huh? Ah, okay, we with the, the car. Tunnel. Yeah. I thought you meant like a walking tunnel. No. I was like, what the hell, I can walk over there. No, there's the bridge and also the tunnel. Yeah, you have to pay a toll, right, mm -hmm. to get yeah. across. Yeah, we did that. We went over there because there's a big mall about two days ago. So not only in Greece you have cats chilling everywhere, Turkey also has loads of cat chill spots. Yeah, we've seen loads of cats around Turkey as well, haven't we? Yeah, uh -huh. they're always well fed. Yeah. So we've left the palace now, but we're still going to do some more exploring, still got a bit of energy. It's really nice out here, this neighborhood. Loads of like little restaurants around here. And as you can see, you can get around on these trams if you want. What is that? A scooter? I'm, yeah, with a, a luggage. Oh, with luggage. That's why I couldn't work out what it was. That's a good way to travel around. We need to do that. <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna go through these walls here. I guess this is still like the old walls of the historic city. And there's a park here. So we're gonna walk through the park. Yeah, so, so far, literally everywhere we go in Istanbul is absolutely beautiful. Once again, this park. I don't know how you pronounce it, I think it's called Gulani Park. Look at this though. <laughs> so 
So we're going a different way back home. We're kind of circling around. So now we're walking along the river here. Got many local fishermen around here. Loads of cats around here as well. Maybe they're waiting for the free fish from the fishermen. These dudes are swimming. <laughs> I didn't know you could swim around here. You have the original Byzantine wall from the Byzantine era. So yeah, it's heavily damaged, but still standing for the most part. Looks like they might have renovated it, the part on the top. Looks pretty new. Yeah, this area looks new as well. Looks like they're restoring it maybe. Now we've got kitten overload. Look at all these little kittens here. Like three of them look the same. Hey Carol, look at these guys just floating down. Floating away. Wow, that's dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't do it. Where are they going? It's the next day now i almost forgot to close this video so closing it out now and this is the place that we're staying i didn't show you the room so this is 40 euros a night so it's just a small little room right now we only have this view before we were in another apartment above with a nice view but now we got this view so the reason we changed is because we decided to stay longer in istanbul extend our stay and that room wasn't available that one was around uh, 50 euros i think about 10 euros more but the view was really awesome and besides that just as usual got a nice modern bathroom and just a fridge there is a place where we can cook outside the other room for 10 euros more also had uh, like a little kitchen inside the apartment so it was a lot better but this is a nice room anyway and the uh, internet's good and we're planning on making one more video here in Istanbul. There's still a lot more to do, so that will be the next video. If you like this one, just drop a like to support us. Subscribe if you like to see more videos like this. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook, and we'll see you in the next one.